You cannot travel within and stand still without. Our inner world creates our outer world. We're continuing the reading of James Allen's book. We are on the second to last chapter titled The Thought Factor in Achievement, and we'll pick up where we left off. This is a very powerful way. Just let these words soak in, and I will continue. We left off last reading with the greatest achievement was at first and for a time a dream. The oak sleeps in the acorn, the bird waits in the egg, and in the highest vision of the soul, a waking angel stirs. Dreams are the seedlings of reality. Your dreams, your dreams are the seeds that you must nourish, water, plant, give your attention to the sunshine of your mind, your focus, your will, so that they will grow and come into this world. So your dreams are seedlings of realities of what can be in this world what we can see here smell taste and touch i want to see what your dreams are so it says your circumstances may be uncongenial but they shall not long remain so if you but perceive an ideal and strive to reach it remember an ideal is an idea that you've fallen madly in love with that gnaws at you that doesn't let you sleep you might have had it for your whole life and it just haunts you it doesn't let you go it's not gonna let you get away with it no matter how much you try to achieve in other areas because you might find it easier to achieve in other areas there is just this one thing that you know like you know like you know you want to do you have a desire to do it you don't know why you try to pray it away but it wants to come through you desires is the universe wanting to express through you the, the my favorite definition of what a, a desire a true desire of your heart a true desire of your heart it's illogical it's god wanting to manifest through you how else do things on this earth become god can only come through us are the instruments the image right of himself that's what i believe so it says your conditions and your circumstances right now might not be the best, but they're not going to remain that way. If you find an idea and fall madly in love with it and you strive to reach it, okay, you cannot travel within and stand still without. Here is a youth hard pressed by poverty and labor, confined long hours in an unhealthy workshop. As I read this, I want you to think of yourself and kind of see where you're at. This is a metaphor for life. So it says, think of yourself as a youth hard pressed by poverty and labor, confined long hours in an unhealthy workshop, unschooled and lacking of all arts and refinement. But the dreams, but you dream of better things. You think of intelligence, of refinement, of grace and beauty. You conceive of, mentally build up an ideal condition of life. The vision of a wider liberty and a larger scope takes possession of you. Unrest urges you to action and you utilize all your spare time and means small though they are, to develop your latent powers and resources. Very soon, so altered has your mind become that the workshop can no longer hold you. It has become so out of harmony with your mentality that it falls out of your life as a garment is cast aside and with the growth of opportunities, which fit the scope of your expanding powers, you pass out of it forever. Years later, we see you full grown, and we find you a master of certain forces of the mind, which you wield with worldwide influence and almost unequaled power. In your hands, you hold the cords of gigantic responsibilities. You speak and lo, lives are changed. Men and women hang upon your every word and remold their characters and sun-like. You become the fixed and luminous center around which innumerable destinies revolve. You have realized the vision of your youth. You have become one with your ideal. I love that. It says, and you too, you will realize the vision, not the idle wish of your heart, be it base or beautiful or mixed or a mixture of both. For you always gravitate toward that which you secretly most love. So it says, you will realize the vision that you hold you will realize you will enter into the reality it will become a reality for you whatever vision you're holding and getting emotionally involved with every day even if it's unconsciously that's why it's so important to understand what's going on in our mind and the best way to do that is let's tune into how we feel are, are we disturbed are we feeling off is there a disturbance in the force are we not 
feeling our best? Is there something bothering us? Is there just kind of a low level, a stream flowing always in the background, a tune of discontent, of fear, of worry, that there's something else that is for us, but we're not really experiencing it right now. So it says, you will realize the vision, not the idle wish of your heart. Your vision can be base. It can be the highest realities. But whatever you hold in your heart, whatever you hold in your heart of hearts will come to fruition. So it says, you will realize your vision, not the idle wish in your heart, be it ugly or beautiful or a mixture of both, for you will always gravitate toward that which you secretly most love. Into your hands will be placed the exact result of your own thoughts. You will receive that which you earn, no more, no less. Whatever your present environment may be, you will fall, remain, or rise with your thoughts, your vision, your ideal. I love that. It says, whatever your present result, whatever your present environment is right now, you will fall lower, you will remain exactly the same, or you will rise above with your thoughts, depending on how you think, depending on what you envision, and depending on the idea you've fallen madly in love with. And so, you know, staying the same, remaining is really an illusion because everything always changes. Life is constant change. And so we're either falling back or we're rising above our circumstances to the better, always better, always growing. There is no limit. There truly is. And I think we have this unconscious thought of, well, it can't be that good. Well, come on, don't be ridiculous. It's like, we're limitless. We truly are. The only limits we place is the ones we place in our own mind. It's our paradigms. We put ourselves in this box that, wow, that's, that's as much as I can do. Like, come on, Carla, six figures in a month. That's ridiculous. People make six figures in an hour, like in a second. Let's, let's think, let's, it's reality, it's true. It really is true. But it's like, do you want it to be true for you? And it can be, but the only thing that'll hold that reality from becoming real is your thoughts about it. Because if you think it's ridiculous, you're never going to get involved and fall in love with an ideal or a vision for that. And it's not about the money. It's about what? systems would you have to put in place? What kind of services would you have to render to get that kind of earn that kind of money? Okay. So it says you will become as small as your controlling desire, as great as your dominant aspiration. In the beautiful words of Stanton Kirkham Davis, you may be keeping accounts and present and presently you shall walk out of the door that for so long has seemed to you the barrier of your ideals. And, sh and you shall find yourself before an audience, the pen still in your hand, or the pen still behind your ear, the ink stains on your fingers, and then and there shall pour out the torrent of your inspiration. You may be driving sheep, and you shall wander to the city, bucolic, and open-mouthed. Bucolic means, we looked this up, it's when you are, you live a very quaint kind of rural life, and that's just kind of the pace you live bucolic lifestyle it's like um it's the opposite from city folk it's like a country person so it says you may be driving sheep and you shall wander into the city you know real country with your mouth wide open seeing yourself at this big city you shall wander under intrepid guidance of the spirit into the studio of the master and after a time he shall say i have nothing more to teach you and now you have become the master who did so recently dream of great things while driving sheep. So those little examples he gave here, it says you may be keeping accounts and presently you shall walk out of your door that for so long has seemed to you a barrier from your ideal life. And you find yourself before an audience. The pen is still behind your ear. The ink is on your hands. This is a really great metaphor for actors and artists. You have been studying. You have been working so hard. And, and one day you will just find yourself. That's how it happens. It's the work you do every day. Put your head down and just do the work. That is inevitable. You will find yourself on stages. If you've been driving sheep and living a you know really humble life and doing your daily work and you dream of city life, you will find yourself there one day. It's inevitable. We just have to focus on the work and the guidance. 
So it says, you will achieve your dream if you just hold that vision. You shall lay down the saw and the plane to take upon yourself the regeneration of the world. This is the last part of this chapter, and then we have one more left. So it says, the thoughtless, the ignorant, and the indolent, seeing only the apparent effects of things and not the things themselves, talk of luck, of fortune, and chance. Seeing a man grow rich, they say how lucky he is. Seeing a man or observing another be intellectual, they exclaim how highly favored he is. And noting the saintly character and wide influence of another, they remark how chance aids him at every turn. They don't see the trials and failures and struggles which these men have voluntarily encountered in order to gain that experience. And they have no knowledge of the sacrifices they have made, of the undaunted efforts they have put forth, of the faith they have exercised, that they might overcome the apparently insurmountable and realize the vision of their heart. They don't know the darkness and the heartaches. They only see the light and joy and call it luck. They do not see the long and arduous journey, but only behold the pleasant goal and call it good fortune. Do not understand the process, but only perceive the results and call it chance. In all human affairs, there are efforts and there are results. And the strength of the effort is the measure of the result. Really listen to that. In all human affairs, there are efforts, the doings, the actions, and there are results the fruits of the labor and the strength of the effort is the measure of the result so if you see a big result a real strong big prosperous result it is in direct proportion and measure to the efforts that were put into it i want you to really think about when you see successful people whether it be on social media tv the movies in your in your company in your friendships in your family it is so easy to be like, they're lucky. They got a hand up. They're sleeping with somebody. We do not believe as the sky is blue. Well, I speak for myself. I used to. That, come on, somebody helped you. You must have been born with a silver spoon. Like, no, that's not how the law works. If that's what you're seeing and your intuition is telling you something's off, it's not going to last. This person's success will not truly last. I'm talking about true success, solid success, real prosperity that continues to come and come and build and build and expand. That is in direct proportion to the efforts that that person put in, whether you like them or not. And that goes into the whole thing about how we judge people in their lives. If someone's like a Victoria's Secret model, you're like, oh, come on, how hard can she have it? You never know if they're dealing with abuse, if they've had trauma in their past, if they have health issues, if they have anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation. Like you don't know. We never know, but we love to judge the book by its cover. So if somebody, this changed my mind. When I see somebody successful, happy, healthy, thriving, Oh my gosh, I just, good for you, good for you. I cheerlead them because I know that I don't know their story and I don't know what they've been doing, but I know if they have that success, they've been putting in the work and I respect that. Even if I don't like them, even if I do not like the person or don't agree with what they say, they can believe complete opposite than me, but I respect the work they put in for the the good work of their life. And remember, success, in my opinion, is when you help other people, when you're healthy and happy and you're good at influence. Some people might think success is something else, but that's my definition of it. So in all human efforts, in all human affairs, there are efforts and there are results. And the strength of the effort is in direct measure to the result. Chance is not. There's no such thing as chance. Gifts, powers, material, intellectual, and spiritual possessions are the fruits of effort. They are thoughts completed, objects accomplished, visions realized. The vision that you glorify in your mind, the ideal that you enthrone in your heart, this you will build your life by, this you will become. This is such a powerful chapter. So I wanna encourage you, challenge you throughout your weekend, throughout your day to day. What do you think about successful people? When someone has a really hot body, they're just ripped. They're snatched, as my friends would say. Uh, they are wealthy. They drive nice cars. Um, they have healthy, happy marriages. Everything just looks pretty. And it's like, you can be like, ah, they're so, ah. you know, we get this in us like, oh, God, how is their life so perfect? And we're like, 
they're just doing that for posting. They're just clearly their house must be a mess or they must have secret addictions or they must be dark and dirty in some way. No one could be that. But when you really see somebody winning and you see someone happy constantly, consistently growing and working on themselves and they just got it going on and they're successful and doors keep opening, they're lucky. You be sure that that person is, they got, they got this inner game, right? They're doing the work because the work in here and what we do in here reflects out here. And one in a study group, when we were reading this, we were talking about somebody like Kim Kardashian or the Kardashians. You can think anything you want of them, but they obey the law. They are working the law. It doesn't matter what they've had. They are the effort they're putting in. You might, but well, it's easy for them. No, that literally goes against the law. The effort, the hours they put in, the time they put in is the direct proportion of their results. So if, you know, Kim just got this big airplane, I think I saw on Instagram of like Kim Air, a jet. It's like, that's in direct proportion to the work she's put in. And you can think whatever you want, but it's the truth. Results don't lie. If she's getting those kind of results, she must be putting that type of effort. You can't pay people to be you, to go on the interviews, to put your face out there, to, you know, do those hours. We all have the same hours in the day. So let's, shift our mindset of how we judge others even if we don't like them if they're doing them and they're helping people they have fans respect the work and the effort and if we want that in our lives let's just pay attention to what successful people do and hopefully most likely you're following people who you resonate with and who you really like and their message in life and just focus on what resonates with you what makes you feel good and you'll find that same success. So we have one more chapter left. I'll finish that next week. It's Serenity. It's the last chapter. So I will see you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Have a great Friday.